today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a demo lesson for math. And this is going to be working on one of the mass, math standards for mathematical practice. The third one, where we critique the reasoning of others. So this can be used for many grade levels and um, the content I'm gonna be teaching is decimals, but uh, the main focus for your takeaway today is using the tools from my Viewboard Whiteboard to help me teach this math lesson. So let's get started. So to start my lesson, I'm going to go over to my toolbar and open the magic box. And in the magic box, I have already set it up so that my Google Drive is connected to my Viewboard Whiteboard. So when I click on the drive icon, all the files that I have in my drive show up. I'm gonna choose the file that has the presentation that I want to use today. And this presentation was um, found on the CASP Tools for Teachers website, and it has resources grades three through 12 that are pre-made standards-based lessons. So I highly recommend checking it out. So for today, I'm gonna choose all of my slides. I'm gonna choose select all, and then I'm going to import these slides into my canvas, puts them in as a picture. And um, so as I stated earlier, my lesson focus is on decimals, but we're gonna be critiquing the reasoning of others. So to start my lesson today, I am gonna go over a number talk. And in this number talk, I want kids to identify which one doesn't belong. This is from the Which One Doesn't Belong website and I would be getting student responses to which one they think does not belong in this. And the nice thing is using my pen and tapping on the pen tool, I can then write down all of my students thinking. And this is gonna get us started in the lesson because they are gonna be sharing how they think through problems and how they are able to share their reasoning with other people. So as they are sharing their responses, I can write their responses right onto my screen for us to look at and discuss. Which one do they think doesn't belong? There really isn't a right or wrong answer to these. That's what's such a great conversation starter. And I can put their responses right here on the board as they're sharing with me in real time. So we're done with our opening number talk. And on the next slide, this is going to be the first part of our lesson, the I do whole group part. And just as if my students were working on a piece of paper, I want them to see me circling, underlining, paying attention to key details in this word problem. So as I'm reading this problem, again, I'm gonna use my pen tool and I'm gonna model those word problem strategies that I want them to be doing on their own. So as we're reading this and I come to important information, I can underline, I can circle, I can draw attention to this. And the nice part is I have a bunch of pen tool colors available to me. So if I really want to show them that anytime we see a number, um, we're gonna circle it and I want them to see that in a different color, I have all those options available to me. Right now it's showing me black, red, and blue. But if I tap on it again, it opens up a whole menu of colors. So I don't have to fumble through, um, you know, finding pens under a document camera. I have everything right here that I need. So I can continue annotating on this question with my students as we're working through the problem. Then we go to the next page and this is where the question is for them that I'm gonna model. So again, I'm gonna use my pen tools and I have all those colors. So if I want to um, practice this problem in red and we're gonna find the mistake here and we're gonna identify the parts that there was a mistake in in red to show that that problem is there and then now the other partner's problem, we're gonna do this in blue so the kids can really clearly visually see what problem it is I'm working on. And again, pen tool, I have unlimited amount of colors available to me. So continuing on with our lesson, now we are doing a small group um, activity where I want students to work together in groups to solve the problem. And so again, I want them to be working on it in groups 
So I want to help them to read through this problem, but I really want them to practice those skills of annotating on those um, word problems. So as we're reading, I don't want to be circling and highlighting as I did in the original lesson, I mean in the original question. This time I'm going to open up that pen tool and I'm going to pull out the highlighter. So um, when I choose highlighter, now as we're reading, I can highlight the important information and that will help prompt them when they're working in their groups to know that that's something that they should be paying attention to. So as we're reading along, and I'm seeing the important information, I can just highlight it for them. Then, now it is their turn, they're gonna be working together to answer these um, questions, finding the error analysis. So they're working either on whiteboards or on paper at their desk, they're working together and I'm ready for them to share their responses with me. So the way we're gonna do that is opening up participate mode. And that is available down here in the corner. It has some different color um, heads on the bottom. And when it opens up, it's gonna default into having three different group options or three different section options. But I'm gonna have six groups for this activity. So I'm gonna come down here. These are all my grouping options. I can have one, two, three, four, or six. And so I'm gonna choose six. And now I have six separate boxes that each of my groups can come up and write their responses. They can use their fingers, they can use the um, marker, they can use um, any, any stylus or anything that you have in your classroom, but they can just come right up and write in these boxes what their answers are. And you may be thinking, I have first graders, they can't reach all the way up there at the top. There is a simple solution to that. There is an arrow button down here. And if we choose the arrow button, it switches the boxes. So you could have groups one, two, and three come up and write. And then when they're finished, I can press the button again and switch it. And when I annotate on this, it will keep the annotations there as I switch it. The other nice thing is if a student is working in this box and they keep their finger down and they go into another box, it is not going to mark on the other student's screen unless they pick up their finger and write in that box as well. So they have their own dedicated space to work in. So we're all done with that. The, each of the groups have come up. We've had a conversation about how they got their answer. We're looking at their reasoning. We're thinking through the steps. And so I'm all finished. Unfortunately, I can't save these annotations. And the other downfall is I can't push questions onto this. The only option is a blank screen. So if you have questions that you want the kids to work on, there isn't a way to kind of put those on the screen already. You would write those on there. So when I'm all finished, I'm gonna X out of it and it brings me back to my presentation. And now we are on the, oops, we are on the independent practice part of this. And so I'm actually gonna pull in another app for my students to do that independent practice. And that app is called Cami. And every teacher in our district and every student in our district has access to this. So they have this problem and I have already preloaded the question into Google Classroom to go out to the students through Cami. So at this point, I would tell them to get their computers and they're gonna log into Google Classroom. If you don't use Google Classroom, they can still use Cami, And um, they would go into the assignment and it would have the question there for them. So now from my view board, I'm gonna go into my Google Classroom by going into Chrome. And when I log in, I would go to the class that I've assigned it to and click on the assignment. And when I click on the assignment, it's gonna give me a menu that looks similar to this. And I'm gonna choose view instructions. And um, if I had gone in and updated something and given them kind of an edit to the work, I can go in here and do update work if I needed to. So that's a really nice feature. But for now, I've given this assignment to my students and I want to see what they're doing. I want to talk about their answers. So I'm going to go to the student work tab. 
and this um, icon just popped up that says class view. And so when I click on that, it gives me a little screenshot of what the students are doing. It takes just a second. You could obviously do this ahead of time. And since um, we have two students in this classroom, I can zoom out and I can see that this student has some responses already and I can talk about this answer with my class. You can also preview this on your laptop, make sure that the responses are appropriate and then come up to the board and show these answers up in front of the classroom. And this was very simple to assign. Um, I pulled up a blank sheet in Kami, took a screenshot of my slide deck put that in and then assigned it to my students. Took less than two minutes and my students now have the problem that I have on my slide deck and they have it very easily accessible through Google Classroom, through Microsoft Teams, or by just straight going into Kami and having it assigned to them in there. You find Kami by clicking on the circle with a K, the purple circle with a K. And if you have questions about Kami, please reach out to the tech trainers. We would be thrilled to show you all of the features that it has in it. So now I'm finished with um, talking through the independent practice. We've done this through Kami. We've talked about the responses and I wanna go back into my Viewboard whiteboard. And um, as the students are doing that independent practice, I want to pull in a timer. Um, I like to have timers with music on it from YouTube. Your view board has a timer built into it. So if you click on the, the um, overlay tools, you have a timer built into your view board. But I think it's really fun when you have um, countdown timers in YouTube with music. So I'm going to come over here to the magic box. I'm going to click on the YouTube icon and I'm just going to search for a five minute timer. So I'm going to type in five minute timer. Ooh, if I spelled it right. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, we'll do a seven minute timer. So we're going to put this seven minute timer in and as my students are working, we're going to have this playing up here on the board so that they know how much time they have left on it. And when I am finished with it, I'm just gonna click the X, get it out of the way, and then um, I'm all finished with my lesson. The kids have been very engaged. They have gotten to have hands-on activities with the view board. I have been up interacting with them. I don't have to sit behind a document camera or behind my laptop. Everything was done through my Viewboard whiteboard, through the Google Classroom um, website. And um, a lot of the tools that I showed today are very simple to use in your classroom. And of course, if you have questions, please reach out to the tech trainers. If you would like to know how to incorporate instructional technology into your lessons, have questions on how to use the Viewboard or the My Viewboard whiteboard software, um, or are looking for just some problem uh, solutions to problems that you have with students using Chromebooks in your classroom. Uh, we would be happy to help you with that. So please reach out and let us know how we can support you. Good luck and thanks for watching.